It's only your love and something But why does it feel like it's true or something? We just vibe and we just crazy, baby What's up, YouTube? It's Curly, so Victoria. I am back with another video. You guys know that I said that I'm going to be trying to put up at least three to four videos today. If I can do more, awesome. If I can't, then three to four videos, okay? I actively, currently do videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sunday. And what's today? Tuesday. Therefore, I am going to be shooting this video. I was initially supposed to go do my volunteer services where I do my community service, just doing some giving back. I know a lot of people hear community service and they have this connotation like I'm in trouble or I've been arrested and I gotta go make up hours. No, when I say community service, I say volunteer work. I'm saying that I'm giving back my time for a probable cause, for a pop, uh, 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 um, for a good reason. So basically, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you've already been subscribed, thank you for tuning in as well. Anyway, I am going to make this video just really quickly. I know you guys are wondering what's on my mind, what are my thoughts, okay? So if you could tell by the title of this video, it basically is talking about why I decided to get my real estate license at the end of 2017, join my office 2018, and still be actively a realtor in 2019. Well, if you're interested, you want to know a little bit why, here is the video. This video is perfect for you. I'm going to hope that I can actually make this video really quick because it's just my opinion as to why I joined this industry and just kind of giving you like just a little bit of feedback on it. So basically 2017 rolls around. I'm working within my degree field, don't want to disclose of my position that I was working because, you know, just privacy. Um, especially when you deal with criminal justice, a lot of times a lot of stuff is a little private. So working at my job, you know, just kind of love the people, you know, love the atmosphere, love that I'm not constantly micromanaged, everything. It's just, it was becoming a lot and I don't even think it's the position to really blame. I just have always seen myself, even growing up, like when I'm tasked with something, once I learn it, if it's not always something new, I get bored really fast, don't wanna be bound by a nine to five, don't wanna be bound by any of those factors because I just feel bored all the time and then I feel like, like I could be literally working for myself instead of punching someone else's clock. That was why I wanted to get out of what I had you know, going on. Now mind you, uh, some people, when they get into real estate, they either keep a job and they keep doing real estate because it is um, an industry that is an up and down, hit or miss, people come through, deals fall through type of industry. And other people might have saved up or, you know, have side businesses and things like that to assist them as they take on this journey. Well, for me, initially, when I started real estate, I wanted to focus on getting all of the educational requirements out of the way. I was not only working my position, I had picked up a secondary job just to do. Um, I was working my position and I was pursuing my MBA. Um, so for me, it was a lot going on all the time, a lot of education. When I first started doing the educational aspects of real estate, I remember you know, just feeling like, geez, I'm trying to learn all this real estate, but I'm also um, in my MBA program. So this is a lot of, you know, law here in real estate and also a lot of business here in the MBA program. So it was a lot, but needless to say, I am one of those go-getter types who no matter what the circumstance, whatever the situation, I am going to come out on top regardless because that's just the effort that I'm going to give. Um, so I'm working on, you know, everything and I was doing that and I ended up, you know, getting all of my pre-licensing, all of those educational requirements needed prior to taking the state exam done. Got that done, took the state exam, ended up passing the state exam. Once I passed the state exam, there's post things that you have to do um, to maintain your license and that you have to do before um, uh, you could potentially be 
um, having an expired license or something becomes null and void, um, things like that. So there was a lot that you had to get done, but I strategically set it up in addition to the schedule that I already had and I was able to get those um, requirements taken care of and squared away. So fast forward, past all of my stuff, mind you, some of these steps as far as education, you don't have to do them right away when you first get licensed. Um, but there are some steps that you have to do by the end of your renewal period. And if you don't do them, you do run the risk of your license becoming null and void. So for me, being that I wasn't anxious for anything in a sense, I wasn't one of those people who said, when I get into real estate, I need to make my first check because I don't have anything else that's gonna back me up. Wasn't me. Obviously, you know, there was, it is more of a, it kind of is a little bit difficult in a sense because you do want to take care of your regular responsibilities, but here's this um, entrepreneurial endeavor that's going to require additional costs and things like that that's taking away from your budget that was never planned for. You see what I'm saying? So it could become a little bit difficult for people. It could be a little bit, you know, a sacrifice slash compromise. I know how much time I sacrificed and how much I compromised and the money that I poured into um, this profession and this career and I knew that I was not going to let my license become null and void simply by not doing the things that were asked of me so I decided in my first after I got licensed like I said end of 2017 I got licensed after I got licensed I literally went on a spree of education in addition to my MBA program because I finished my MBA program in 2018 so I went on a spree of trying to finish my MBA program plus I was sitting here trying to get all of the education out of the way when it came to real estate now I felt like post license real estate I felt like anything could happen my health could decline you know rapidly unplanned for um, something could happen and I don't get the availability to attend these courses or whatever and then I run the risk of my license being null and void so I said instead of running across those circumstances that may be have an opportunity to happen later on in my career I'm just gonna just be do do my due diligence and get all my things done right away in the beginning so I did I got my um education out the way um now it's at the point where my license is about to be renewed but I've been got my education out the way. I'm going to call them, confirm that they've received everything. Once I get that confirmation again, that reassurance, then I'm just going to pay my renewal fee and I'm going to be good on my license. But there are some people who I met when I first was getting licensed who literally was on the verge of tears because they didn't know if they were going to pass their test that was in front of them. And if they didn't pass their test, they ran the risk of having a null and void license for, you know, like their license uh, not fulfilling all requirements. And I told them, I'm like, why would you set yourself sorry Cameron definitely just fell and face planted but anyway I'm like why would you set yourself up to sit here and do your educational aspects of your post licensing on the back end when you could have done them in the beginning if you would have planned well and you would have thought so now you're on the edge of your seat hoping that you don't fail this because if you fail this your license is null and void that is not the type of pressure I'm trying to be under I know you know, um, that's just, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. not trying to be procrastinate, not trying to do any of that. That's not the time to perform under pressure. That's stupidity, in my opinion. You've had two years to do all of this, and yet you wait to the last minute. Mm -mm. I felt like that type of procrastination showed me what you would be like in business if you adopted that mindset to always be procrastinating like that. That could be the start that ending could be the start of your new beginning, which is not a good start. So I got the education out of the way. Boom, fast forward to 2018, Valentine's Day. Everybody probably out there with bae, out there with boo, getting rings, getting flowers, getting dinners, having dates. You know what I did? I went to the office. I was in the office. And I joined my office like Valentine's Day. Now, obviously, in offices, they have different times where you consider, like, some people will run to the beginning of the month, end of the month, something like that for your actual um, anniversary date. But my actual anniversary date, like, the actual day that I got all my stuff in and taken care of, Valentine's Day. So, fast forward. Um, I've gotten the education out the way at this point. Now, there's more education that I have to get because the office in itself wanted to do training and developing. So I underwent all of that training and developing that they offered. 
then you know I started getting little opportunities where I would do a few open houses here do um, you know referral deal here here like that but presently in 2019 I am now done with my MBA program I am more on my real estate than I was 2017 to a little bit of 18 I wasn't worried about how many houses I can sell there's people who were, but that wasn't me because I have goals within goals. My goal was to get all of my education out the way and pass the test, the state exam. And I did, I did all that. So 2018, I'm like, you know, yes, I'll do this open house. Yes, I have this referral deal. Yes, I have this, you know what I mean? And I pretty much was in the stages of building my business. You are working for yourself. Therefore, I needed to start getting back in things together. You know, things, well, starting things more than back in things. I needed to get my start together and I needed to get my training from the office together and I needed to start gradually putting myself in these situations now I've been in sales before I've been in sales in my life and I know how to talk to people I understand that life is a people business so you know it's that much simpler for me to be in it so my talk game is wicked cool wicked cool you know what I mean I legit you know obviously sometimes I can get a little chatty and then, you know, I literally can have moments where I'm to myself where I don't even say like but three words in a day. So it's a hit or miss with me. I like you or I think you're cool. Like as a person, you're probably going to get the chatty side of me at some times. And other times I just want to be chilled. So when it comes down to business, it comes down to sales. It's personality. It's not really about what you know. It's about how you uh, how you finesse what you know and I don't even know if finesse is the real word but pretty much how you go about what you know you know because we can know the same information but the only thing that's going to separate us is our personalities our vibrant personalities how you know we interact with people our sense of humor our vibes everything like that that's what's going to make this guy choose me over you or this guy choose you over me everybody has something that makes them click with someone you might be trying to help somebody who buys a house and he chooses me because I have locks and he has locks. That right there is a connection. There's a story. Or she, she might choose you because, I don't know, you always have the cutest outfit. So she just feels like she can talk to fashion with you and she can also talk business with you. It's different reasons as to why people choose who they choose. And that's that. So one thing that I do want to say is, yeah, I feel like I got into this industry because... I was always up for a challenge, never really wanted to be tied down by a nine to five, never wanted to be tied down by uh, just sitting on anyone's clock. I've always seen big for myself, always seen myself as being someone who's going to make it in this life and who's just going to be truly successful. So I definitely know that, you know, growing up, I wanted to be a lawyer and sometimes that still pops into mind. Am I going to go to law school or am I not? But within real estate, there's a lot of law. Um, I'm not saying that I'm not going to go to law school and I'm not saying that I, um, I am, I'm just letting you guys know there's a lot of law in there. There's a lot of, you know, but I love business. I have a zeal for business. I have a zeal for learning. I have a zeal for being cute. I have a zeal for being fashionable. You see what I'm saying? And within these industries, those are two things that I love. I love that I can be who I want to be, who I am rock my designers right rock my fashion rock my thrift halls you know and also conduct business on a mature level and on a you know like on point business level so that was that for me um i think i might make a separate video instead of continuing to chat in this video about it but i think i'm gonna make a video that's just basically saying what to expect in real estate because there's a lot of people who either reach out to me contact me and say hey I want to get in the business what do I do first of all if you ever are one of those people I'm not gonna tell you step for step what to do because my thing is if you're passionate about something you love something one you're gonna appreciate it more when you've had to do the work and you've had to struggle to get there Two, if you're really passionate about it you're gonna do the work to find out how do you become that position that whatever you want you know what I mean like, I'm, I don't come from a family who groomed me to be a realtor when I got this age, you know. There's some people who mom has been a realtor since they were little and they know about properties and houses. And when they get bigger, they end up being a realtor like their mom or their dad. Like, that's not my circumstance. So whatever I wanted, 
I've always searched it out. I've always went after it. I've always, always done my homework and never looked to somebody else to tell me exactly every step of the way. And if you think that that's how things work, it's not. It doesn't work like that. Um, which eventually I've been we're doing a lot of working with my consulting and stuff like that that I'm going to be doing, you know, like business consulting at some point. These things, these questions on business strategies, on opinions and things like that that you guys are going to start having for me, I'm going to start being able to actually offer that as a service to you at some point. But as of right now, unless you are paying to be um, literally helped with all of these different things, I'm not telling you how to do A, B, and C. Even when I'm doing consulting, I'm not going to just be like, this is all the information. No, I'm going to see how did you, how can we conclude this information with you learning something? You know what I mean? It's like if we never went through the things that made us the toughest, because all of our failures is what made us succeed, that's what made us successful. If we never went through our failures and we've never succeeded through our failures, will we ever really truly appreciate our successes? Because all successes spun from failure. Thomas Edison, when he created the light bulb, if he would have quit after the first time, do you know where we would be right now? Do you know where he would be? He continued to make that light bulb. He said, I have not failed a thousand times. I've only found a thousand times. Hold on, let me, do not let me quote it and get it wrong. Oh yes, I, I think it was a thousand, the number. I've not failed a thousand times. I found a thousand times. I only found a thousand ways that wouldn't work, basically. You know what I mean? He looked at his failures as successes from the jump. Not that I failed a thousand times, but I found a thousand ways that just didn't work. That's the mindset you have to have. That's the mentality you have to have. This is an industry that you have to be disciplined. You have to, you know, be on yourself. You literally, people are going to be on you, but this is not a babysitting. And that's why it's like this video is almost at 20 minutes. And I'm going to end it in a second. I'm going to make a separate video that's just going to talk about what I was just talking about okay so basically to conclude this video I got into this industry because I am a very 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 tenacious person I'm a very very hard-working person and I definitely have always believed in entrepreneurship I've always seen myself as my own boss and um, though I am going to be potentially segueing in addition to what I'm doing into something that is going to probably require a nine to five basis from me. I'm not leaving real estate, but I'm adding something that may cause me to be, you know, on a steady nine to five clock, not by force, but by choice, but also for growth um, within what I'm doing. I'm not going to reveal what it is right now because I've only been in two rounds of interview. I have not yet reached the third round and if I reach the third round and I am selected then we can go from there but right now it's no real biggie to talk about it because it's not secured so I hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you like comment share subscribe give this video a thumbs up please you give the video a thumbs up buddy no but until next time i will see all of you lovely beautiful faithful people in my next video it's only 11 something